Hello, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mengs, and I welcome you guys back to my Fire Emblem hacking tutorial. Today we are going to be checking out the character editor. We're going to be creating some characters, and I'm going to show you everything you need to know to create your own characters and insert them into your ROM hacks. As always, there is a playlist linked below this video, which will take you to all the topics that I cover in this series. If you want a quick overview of the basics, then check out the previous video I did. So today we're going to be creating characters in a Fire Emblem 8 ROM. The process of doing this is most of the same in most of the GBA games. There are some differences which I will point out later. To access the character editor, simply click this button on the screen and this window will pop up. On the left hand side, you can see every single character in Sacred Stones. Usually the playable characters come first and then you'll see a bunch of bosses as well as other characters. If a character gets loaded into the game at any point, you will see them here. You will also notice that there is a bunch of slots simply called Enemy, Merchant, Sellsword, Remnant, Monster, etc. These are the multiple factions that you see in game, and they are also edited in the character editor. But for now, let's just make a character. We're going to be using Erika as a base, since she is the first character that appears in the ROM. Most of the menus that you see here should be pretty self-explanatory. You can see her name, her description, her class, her affinity. Down below you can also see her base stats, her growth rates, and there's also a neat little stat calculator which will show you her average stats at various levels. If you type in level 10, for example, you will see how Erika's stats will be at level 10. At level 20, we can see that she caps speed. This is useful if you want to know how good your character will be later on. Then we have her weapon ranks. These are her personal base weapon ranks that she will start out with in the game. However, if she has a class that gives her a base weapon rank, she will also start with those as well. In Fire Emblem 8, you just need to familiarize yourself with the various benchmarks. 1 point is E rank, 31 points is D rank, 71 points is C rank, 121 points is B rank, 181 points is A rank, and 251 points is S rank. Now, if you make any changes to Erika's stats, you will notice that a little button called Write to ROM will light up in yellow in the top right corner of your screen. This is universal for any change that you wish to make to the ROM. You can change her stats, you can do whatever you want, you can increase her growth rates, upper constitution, reduce her luck, you can play around as much as you want, but no actual changes will be applied to the ROM until you hit right. As a general rule of thumb, you should try to hit right to ROM as few times as possible when making your edits, because every time you click it, you add a tiny bit of space to the ROM. This is not something you need to worry about a lot, but if you excessively write to ROM, you will use up a lot of space over time. If you wish to revert all the changes you've done, you can just click onto another character and then click back to Erika, and she should go back to her base levels. Anyway, let's go through the rest of the menus on screen. On the right hand side here, you can see her support data. Click on this and you'll get a list of all the characters she supports with, as well as their initial support values and their growths. Now, if you're completely new to coding, you may occasionally notice these little weird numbers on screen, such as 1E and A. This is because Fire Emblem Builder uses hexadecimal to write numbers. It is essentially a different kind of numbering system that allows more information to be conveyed with less numbers. It takes a little getting used to, but once you do, it's quite easy to read. There are a bunch of menus on the bottom side of the screen but most of them are pretty self-explanatory. Hover over them and Fire Emblem Builder will tell you what they do. Most of the time, you don't really need to worry about these options since most units will already get their abilities from their class. A good example of this is the Myrmidon Swordmaster lock. Erika doesn't really need this toggled on because her lord already allows her to use Shamshears in Fire Emblem Mates. However, if you want Erika to be a different class and you still want her to be able to use the Shamshear, then you have to toggle this box. All of these other boxes are pretty self-explanatory and I don't think there's any need for me to go through each one of them. As you can see, there are just a bunch of cool things you can do here, such as not granting experience if killed. This is useful on enemy reinforcements if you don't want the player to farm them. If you toggle the boss option, the unit will have a red shield icon if loaded in as an enemy. You can also give her ballista access if you want her to shoot ballistas. 
Hell, you can even give her the Canto skill if you want her to be able to reuse her movement without being on a mount. There's a lot of cool stuff you can play around with here when creating your character. However, to start off with, I advise that you simply only tog the female box if your character is female, and let the rest of the boxes stay off. Now the first thing we're gonna do is load in a portrait. When you click on Erica's portrait, you'll get this little box right here. Most of these buttons you don't really need to concern yourself with. This is advanced tools for portrait makers, and I will not be covering how to make a portrait in this tutorial, because honestly I, I don't know how to make a portrait, I'm not an artist. However, I will show you what a portrait looks like. Luckily, we now live in a time where there are a bunch of free-to-use portraits available online. On Clockinator's repo, for example, there are literally thousands of them available for you to pick between. So if you want to make your own hack, you don't even need to get someone to make your portraits. Of course, when you use freely available portraits online, you have to live with the fact that sometimes you can see other Fire Emblem hacks which uses the same portraits as yours, and this can take away a little bit of your own personal identity with the hack itself. The only buttons you should be aware of with this menu are the import image and the export image. Export image is very useful if you want to download a portrait from a ROM into an image file that you can then insert into another hack. This is what a Game Boy Advance portrait looks like. The reason why a portrait looks like this is because you have the portrait itself in the top left corner. In the top right corner you have the character's mini portrait. This is the portrait that's displayed when you hover over them in game. On the right hand side you have blinking frames. Fire Emblem 6 portraits do not have these. In the bottom left corners are the mouth frames of the characters. These will be activated whenever the character speaks with in-game dialogue. The background color does not need to be anything specific. Fire Emblem Builder will automatically detect it and make it transparent. So now that you know what a portrait looks like, let's try importing one. Click Import Image and go to wherever you have portraits saved on your computer. I'm just gonna find a random one. Alright, let's go with this one. Sometimes Fire Emblem Builder will tell you that the portrait exceeds the 16 color limit. Whenever this happens, just press on automatic color reduction and import. It might make the portrait look a little bit different, but this is just something you have to deal with. Generally speaking, portrait makers do try to adhere to the color limit, but not everyone does this. The first thing you'll notice when importing your portrait is that the mouth and iframes of the character will be all off. This is because Fire Emblem Builder doesn't necessarily know how to adjust them to the portrait. You then need to click on these little arrows here and align the mouth and iframes properly until it looks good. There we go. Once you have a image of the character with closed eyes and an open mouth, it should look good. You can now click right to ROM and then click Write to ROM again to apply the changes. So now that we have the portrait updated of our cute Cinderella Lord right here, let us uh, change her other attributes. Let's start with her name and description. In order to change her name, we need to double click on it. This will bring up the text editor. This was a little confusing to me the first time I saw it, but I'll try to explain it as best as I can. If you click on the left hand side, you will see every single text dialogue in the game. Literally everything that you read in the ROM itself will be found here. As you can see, there's a lot here. Now, you can of course just replace the name Erica with whatever name you want it to be. However, if you don't wish to overwrite the text Erica in the ROM itself, you can click on search and then search for unreferenced free space. And the ROM will give you a list of all the text in the ROM which is not being used. This line right here, for example, Sunderica. Press right to ROM, and then double click on the text itself. Now we have her name. Let's do the same with her description. Again, if you don't wish to overwrite Erica's original description, do the same thing again. Search for unreferenced space, click on one of them, and write whatever description you want. However, be aware that if you write too long lines, then the text will not fit on screen. Allow me to show you with an example. I'm going to write to ROM here, and then I'm going to start up my ROM to show you what I mean. As you can see right now in the cutscenes, our new Lord will make her appearance because we replaced Erica's original one. As you can see, her name works fine, but if we view her description, you can see that it's all jumbled up. As you can see, Fire Emblem Builder shows this text as red. This is an error. It's too long. So let's open it back up again. 
and let's simply clip it like this. There we go, that's much better. Now, Fire Emblem Boulder will tell you if a text doesn't fit the screen or not, but as you get used to this and you start doing it more and more, you kind of get an eye for it and you will see whether a text is correct or not just by looking at it. Let's write to ROM. Now here, Fire Emblem Builder just recommended I install a patch to change the script. Most of the time, when Fire Emblem Builder asks you if you want to install a patch, just press yes. It would not have recommended this patch to me unless it thought it was useful, so just do it. As you can see, the patch is installed automatically. I don't really need to do anything. Let us add our new texts and write to ROM. And let's boot up the ROM again. There we go. A beautiful description. Now that we've done the very basic things of changing portraits, name, and description, let's have a little look at her stats. A unit's total stats in the game is a combination of their base stats as well as their class stats. If we change Erica's class over to a Cavalier, for example, and we check out her new stats, we will see that they are a little bit different to what we're used to. So let's give her a new class. Click on Support Class, and let's find a more appropriate one for her. For now, Let's make her into a mage. I will make an entirely separate video on the class editor and how to make custom classes in the next video. But for now, just find the class you wish and click on it. As you get more familiarized with Fire Emblem Builder, you will learn which numbers correspond to which classes. So if I wanted to do this very quickly, I wouldn't even need to open this menu. I could just input number 26 in the class menu because I know that that is female mage. These are just things you will naturally learn and get better at as you get more into ROM hacking. Now, if we take a look at her stats, we can see that they aren't great. Two base speed as a mage? Huh, that sounds pretty shit if you ask me. Let's amp that up a little bit, shall we? Let's give her 10 base speed, as well as 10 base magic. This is going to be a glass cannon. Let's also change her growth rates around a little bit. Erica's growth rates are kind of boring. Now, the maximum you can set a growth rate in Fire Emblem Builder is 255%. In this window, you can actually see the combined growth rates total of your character. This can be useful if you try to balance all playable characters in your ROM around a particular budget. Now, one thing that is incredibly important to know is that we have now changed Erika's base class from a Lord to a Mage. This means that she will not be able to seize thrones anymore, nor will she be able to access the supply. It is therefore very important that we tick the Lord unit box, as well as the Supply box. Otherwise, we literally won't be able to progress past these chapters. Now, because I feel like playing around a little bit, let's give Tsunderika a bit of a crit boost, similar to that of Swordmasters. And hell, why don't we just allow her to steal as well? Let's have some fun. Once you're satisfied with how your current character looks, press Write to ROM again, and let's boot up the ROM. However, we now see on screen that Erika is still a Lord unit. She definitely has better stats, but she's not a mage like we wanted to. This is because you need to use the unit placer. I'm going to make an entire video on the unit placer later on, but for now, know that the unit placer is responsible for loading units into the ROM itself. So we need to find the prologue, and then we need to find Erika under player placement. Now you will see that Erika appears in multiple tabs here. She appears in multiple events, like the chapter start events. These are all cutscenes, and Erika is actually loaded into each one of them. Now, if you want the cutscene to look good, you sadly have to change her class in every cutscene. So, let's just go ahead and do that right now. Click on Sundar Erika, and change her class from Lord to Mage. And remember to hit Right to ROM. You sadly need to do this every time you want to make a change in the unit placer. However, this doesn't really increase the size of the ROM that much because you're just changing pointers. So don't worry about this too much. Here you can see the intro scene where Castle Rene is being sieged. You can see the soldier coming running up. But Erika also appears in this scene next to her father. So find her and change her class to Mage. You don't need to do this if you're not concerned about what she looks like in cutscenes. If you just want to change her class in the game, just look for the tab called Player Placement. Find Sundar Erika and change her class to Mage. Now let's boot up the ROM again. Now you can see that Cinderella actually appears as a mage in the cutscene. There we go, she is finally a mage. However, in her inventory she still only has a rapier, so we do need to change that as well if we want her to actually attack. So let's go back to the unit placer and find her inventory under player placement. Now here she only has a vulnerary because Seth gives her a rapier in the events. We are not going to go into events right now, 
So for now, all you need to do is click one of her four available item slots, find the item you wish to give her in this menu, I'm going to scroll down and look for a fire tome, double click it and write to Rom. Now Erica has a fire tome in her inventory. She'll also get the rapier from Seth, but we won't change that right now. Let's boot up the ROM again. And finally, we have our character. She has her stats, she has her portrait, she has her description, and she has her name. And now, she also has a fire tome in her inventory. Let's attack with her and see how she does. Yeah, this unit is pretty broken. We not only gave her insane magic and speed, but also a crit boost. However, you may notice right now that she looks pretty much like a generic mage. This is because we haven't edited her palette. In order to access the palette, you need to click this button right here. This will allow you to edit the character's colors. However, I am colorblind, so I cannot teach you how to do this. However, I will probably make an entire video in the future where I bring on a co-host with experience of doing this, and we will teach you how to do it together. You can look forward to that in a future episode. For now, just be content with whatever your character looks like in the game. We don't need to go advanced in this particular episode. There is one small thing I want to talk about, and that is this little line here which says hard coding. Some characters are hard coded to act certain ways in the ROM. If you click on it, it will simply tell you what it is. However, there are other hard coded events. If we find the boss version of Lion in the ROM, he is actually hard-coded to never be affected by Sleep, Berserk, and Silence staves. So if you change Lion in the ROM with another boss character, you will have a boss that cannot be affected by status staves. Very few characters in the ROM have hard-coded events, but you can actually utilize them to your own gain if you know what they do. If you're unsure, just click on them and they will tell you. Just to give you guys a little bit of a recap, I'm now going to quickly change Seth's character using everything I've talked about. The first thing we need to do is give him a portrait. Now, you don't need to import your own. You can also just use a portrait that is already there in the ROM. Let's try to find one for him. Yeah, let's change him to a child. Now, one thing you do have to keep in mind is that some portraits do not have minis. As you can see, this character never appears as a playable unit, and so it doesn't have a mini portrait. So it's just listed as a question mark. But this is fine, he'll still be playable. Let's change his name. Write to Rom. And let's also change his description. Right now, I am directly editing Seth's description in the game, so that means that I will lose out on it if I ever want to use it again. Let's give him the civilian class, just for fun. And let's remove his weapon ranks. There we go. We have now created a civilian Seth. However, he will probably still be loaded in as a paladin unless we go to the unit placer. So let's fix that real quick, shall we? Now here, I am only changing his class in the game itself. This is important because if I were to change Seth's class in the cutscene where he fights Walther, why don't I just show you what happens if we mess around with classes in cutscenes. As you can see right now, Seth is literally a kid. And I'm pretty sure the in-game battle will crash as a result. So, the cutscene actually didn't crash as I thought, it just displayed an overland battle instead, and I don't really think this is going to end up causing any major bugs, but little unforeseen incidents like these will happen if you play around with cinematics too much, so just be aware of that. So there we have it, Sunderika the mage, and Kid the kid. He now cannot fight at all, but it's kind of funny to see how busted Seth's personal bases are, to the point that even if you change him to a civilian, he'll still have pretty good stats. Now, because the civilians don't have combat animations, nothing will display when they attack. You'll just get the overland battles. Now, with all these changes applied, there is one more thing we have to do. We have to save our ROM. As you can see right now, the ROM that we have loaded is the standard FE8 one. I would not save over your original Fire Emblem 8 ROM, or else you might have to go and get a new one. So, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. With this tutorial, you should now be able to modify the characters of any ROM, and create an alternate playthrough of Fire Emblem 8. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, hopefully that is a bit of a good introduction to editing characters. Up next, we'll be taking a look at the class editor. I'm going to be teaching you guys how to make your own custom classes with your own custom animations. So stay tuned for that. Anyway, my name is Finn Manx. Thank you so much for watching. 
and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.